Good morning. Uh, one more reinforcement of what we uh, mentioned on Saturday. And in a sense, we can talk about this in terms of a system of measurement. We can talk about it in terms of a living a light of eternity. Um, but we have this, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And we talked about how you have to have an eternal system in that way of, of measurement. That, that you're valuing it by the things of eternity. And I found this striking, and Ed, Jonathan Edwards, um, in his book, The Religious Affections, I wanna read to you basically a paragraph of this this morning. So a little Edwards to get you going this morning. Hence, therefore, Edwards writes, the religion of heaven, consisting chiefly in holy love and joy, consists very much in affection and therefore undoubtedly true religion consists very much in affection in other words the things you value um your your uh, passions for something um a, a, a way that you treasure something the way to learn the true nature of anything is to go where that thing is to be found in its purity and perfection if we would know the nature of true gold, we must view it not in the ore, but when it's refined. If we would learn what true religion is, we must go where there is true religion and nothing but true religion. And in its highest perfection, without any defect or mixture, all who are true religious are not of this world. They are strangers here and belong to heaven. They are born from above. Heaven is their native country, and the nature which they receive by this heavenly birth is a heavenly nature. They receive an anointing from above, that principle of true religion, which is in them, uh, which is in them is a communication of the religion of heaven. Their grace is the dawn of glory, and God fits them for that world by conforming them to it. What's he doing? He's saying when you, when you want to understand the way that you should be here and now. You should look to heavenly realities. You should pull from them and say, now, the purest thing is all consumed affection towards God, treasuring God above all things. He is the be all and the end all, and you treasure him above all else. And then you work back from that. You don't start here and say, how should I live now? You say, how will I live then? And if that's how I'll live then, how should I live now? Here's another way of saying that. You have to wrestle with, the, with, with this question. Am I living eternal life? Or am I living a life on earth awaiting eternal life? I'm going to say that again. Am I living eternal life? now? Or am I living a life on earth awaiting eternal life? The scripture teaches that you have eternal life now. That is to know Christ. So that means that the quality of your life is peppered, textured, colored by eternity. Keep that in mind as we move forward into verses 22 and 23, because that perspective is what gives life to these verses, a different kind of way where we look at life through a different lens, appreciating as well the danger of looking at it through a mere temporal, temporal lens. May the Lord bless you today.